What's up, guys? So, <clears throat> finally got the car back. I was out for pretty much two and a half, three weeks. Uh, got the new clutch put in. <laughs> but during that time, I'd, I'd ordered some parts. I got a Cobb access port. Um, and I also got the electronic boost controller. And so, based on the types of mods that I have right now currently, um, it allows me to basically flash a stage three map. Um, I'm not going to say that that's probably the safest thing to do. I'm going to play around with it a little bit and just kind of see how it is. And to be honest, I've had it on the car now for about a week. <clears throat> and it feels pretty good, honestly. It feels safe, but it feels pretty good. And I'd rather at least have something than nothing. Um, and like I said before, I have a warranty. And so I'm trying not to mess up the warranty on the car. Um, that way, if I ever have to take the car in for any kind of services, I can always just, you know, deflash the map, take it in, and then put it right back on. So... It does it pretty quick. I can even do it in a parking lot of dealership if I really wanted to. But um, So this video is really just showing you the install process for the access port. I just went through and did an uninstall, which is for the most part the same thing as doing the install. Um, the car is going to do a lot of freaking out. The fan's going to blow, so you're not going to be able to hear me talk. Um, so I'm just going to basically start the process, and then I'm going to conclude the video when the process is over. So um, just watch and enjoy. So first thing you want to do, um, you want to go ahead and open up your door. Um, next, you're going to want to turn the ignition key on. And I'll make a video on this radio um, as well. But <clears throat> So once everything starts loading up, you'll see the access port is still dark. Um, it automatically will turn on, but because I had the car turned on a second ago, I'm going to have to come back in here and turn it back on. But um, And this little dock here, I got this dock off Amazon. Um, I pretty much got it because it had bad reviews. There was people with uh, a lot of WRXs and SCI saying that it didn't really stick on there well. Um, but I saw a couple of Evo reviews and it was pretty sturdy. And that's kind of what I'm seeing as well. Um, so once you... Once you get the key in there and then you turn on the access port or if it doesn't automatically come on, you're going to see some instructions here. Basically it says push OK to accept, which we're going to do. Once we push OK, you're going to get two options here. First one's going to be install. The other one's going to be troubleshooting. We're just going to install it. And installing is basically going to install the access port. But before it does that, it's going to back up your factory map. <clears throat> then it's going to install and allow you to put um, whatever map that you want to flash that over. So when you buy the access port, the reason why you know you're selecting what vehicle the access port is for is because it's already going to come pre-installed with all the maps. And then as they make adjustments and updates, then you want to make sure you update. So if you're going to buy pre-owned, go in there, update the software. But other than that, you should already have all the maps that you need on there. Um, it'll also allow you to go in there and like change the name and all that stuff so um we'll go ahead and go through the install you won't be able to hear me so i'm not even going to talk so it says please confirm that your vehicle matches 2013 to 15 gsr evil x click ok and it's starting there we go so now here's the selection of my maps as it installs i have one on here that i basically just named myself um, things like valet mode just all the three so here we go stage 393 zach and install that one then of course you get the battery discharge warning my battery is not going to die because i don't have battery issues here we go This is what I'm talking about by all the different service warnings that you're going to get. You hear the fan kick on. Pretty quick, we're 99% for the first part. It says, please wait for your access port to read ECU. 
Please wait while the access port generates vehicle data. Please do not turn off your vehicle or unplug the access port. We're already at 67, 68%. Look at that, it's moving. 85%. So please wait while the access port resets ECU learnings. Still got all the errors up there. Okay, installation successful. Please turn the ignition key to the off position for at least 15 seconds before starting the vehicle. Turn it off. We get about 15 seconds. Another thing with these two is um, the access port by default doesn't automatically turn off. Um, so you can actually go through the settings. I'll see if I can do that real quick while uh, we're in here and set it to where it reads that when the car turns off, it'll automatically turn off the access port and then it'll automatically turn it on when the car turns on as well. So, um, we should be good on time. I'm just going to start the car back up. At least turn it on. Okay. Access port did not turn off. And that's because when you turn the vehicle off, it has to be running, not just the key turned on for it to automatically turn off. Um, so we'll go ahead and click OK here. So remember to connect to basically get all the different updates. So this is where you're going to do it. I think you're, you have to go... Um, so the first thing most people are going to do is they're just going to go straight... Um, into their gauge setup here. There's going to be some default gauges on there. Um, but you can change them, adjust things like your shift light and so on. Uh, but we're going to go back. I think it's under setup. Yeah, there we go. Auto on off settings. Um, enable auto on off. You click on that and you see the little green one away. I had it already enabled, so I'll just go ahead and put it back on there. So, um, and that's really it. I mean, it's short and sweet. Whenever you start this, um, when it automatically turns on, since so we're going under gauges here, anytime it automatically starts, it's going to have the gauges present. So you don't have to go in there and select them each time. You also have an option where you can go in here and log. I'm not logging anything. I'll start doing that because I'm looking at like maybe getting a delicious, um, I think it's delicious tuning but they have an E85 set up that you can actually uh, plug into the access port. Um, so when I start doing that, then I'll probably gonna have to log to send them uh, some information, but um, that's really about it. So um, you do not need to have this plugged in to run your tune. So I'm in Oklahoma. It felt like a hundred degrees the other day. I don't really know if that's really safe for this. So I would take this out for instance, maybe keep it in my work bag, keep it in the house. The tune is on the computer itself. You only really need this if you want to read the gauges or if you want to flash and remove maps. So you don't have to keep this in the car if you don't want to. Um, it's probably good to make sure you don't get it stolen too. So um, That's all I got. Like I said, next video is going to be on this Android 10.2 inch display here. Um, but outside of that, go ahead and like and subscribe to the videos. I appreciate you guys watching.